Hey, Steve Mignogna here at High Octane Classics in Auburn, Massachusetts, doing the muscle car crawl. This is a real 1965 Shelby GT350, one of 562 built in 1965. And here are five cool things about this car. First up, in 1965, we all know that the Ford Mustang arrived on the scene. One of the key styling features was up front in the grill. The running horse, the corral, the whole logo that went right here. Well, not on GT350s. Instead, they simply removed that stuff and used the background honeycomb as the grill. Painted it sort of this bluish argent and did the job. Also added the fender emblem right here on the driver's side of the car. And voila, without really doing anything, they got a new look for the front of the Mustang. But there was a problem. When they took away the vertical support for that chrome rectangular corral, it created a gap between the two lower parts of the grill. So to fill it, they came up with this cast aluminum filler panel right here. Now this one here has some dings and scuffs in it because as far as I know, these are not being reproduced. So there's 562 cars, you figure there's 570 or so of these things made, maybe more. But that said, these fillers are so rare, you use even a dinged up one on a nicely restored car like this. But that's the story of the grill. Ford got more from using less. Now another detail on the GT350 in 1965 was the hood pins. Fiberglass hood, and again with these hood pins, you got these lanyards, and uh, here's how it worked. You go through like that, hood, hold the hood down. Well, unlike a regular Mustang, which had a latch assembly in this area here with a spring and a latch on the GT350s, there was none of that. Well, the trouble with that was that it left the grill pretty thin to flop in the wind at potentially 135 miles an hour. So Shelby and the team devised this simple stamped metal brace right here to span the distance between the radiator support and the grill and there it is and that circular hole right there yes that shelby's handiwork right there to maybe pull a couple of ounces of metal out of it but again that's another 65 gt 350 specific item the grill and the support moving forward we go into the car now keep in mind 1967 was the first year that Mustangs came standard with seat belts. In 1965, you paid an extra $25.40 for seat belts, lap belts. Well, on all GT350s, you got seat belts, but they were different. These are the three inch wide racing belts, standard Mustang belts when you bought them, were oh about half as wide as this. But here's the thing, these were made by Ray Brown Automotive. Uh, a company that was a pioneer in aftermarket seat belts. And here is the tag right here, Ray Brown Automotive. There it is right there in California. Now, Ray Brown was uh, as early as 1952, 53, he was selling seat belt kits to hot rodders and even to the military. Now, here's the thing early on, hot rodders thought seat belts were a minus, a negative, because if you crashed and a car caught on fire, you were stuck inside. So, believe it or not, Ray Brown had an uphill battle uh, selling seat belts to hot rodders. But of course, by 1965, the SCCI mandated seat belts in all. Uh, race cars and sure enough here they are and unlike ford seat belts the optional ones these are quick release items right here so easy in easy out in fact modern simpson and uh, aftermarket seat belts use this very same sort of uh, duck type design right here which is an aircraft uh, inspired now inside another cool thing Cool thing number four is the steering wheel. We can see that beautiful wood rim wheel. 1965, you got a simulated, or sorry, 66 brought you a simulated wooden wheel, but that 65 unit is very real. Aluminum spokes, and in the center, that little logo, that's the same unit used in the Cobra, the 289 Cobra Roadster, same center. Now, here's the thing. There's no horn button inside of that, so what did Shelby do? Well, right here, this is the horn. It's an instant switch, and that's your horn. Beep, beep. <laughs> crazy. There it is. <laughs> you can kind of hear it. But again, twin horns up front, but uh, no horn button in the middle. So I'm sure that today the uh, uh, 
NHSTA or whatever they are, the, the, the safety administration would not have that because in a panic situation, when you go to reach for the horn, you have to remember to hit that. But another thing too about the GT350 was that it was designed to go racing in the SCCA sports car uh, classes. Now sports cars have two seats, so the SCCA mandated no back seats. So that's why Shelby came up with the plastic filler panel that replaces the back seat in all GT350s. And so that's the story of that. The spare tire cover is also a specific item to the GT350. But there you have it, five cool things about the 1965 GT350 Mustang. 1966, they got a little softer, but 65, one of 562 made. This is uh, the beginning of the dynasty right here. Now, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mignanti YouTube channel.